Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. It's time for May Beauty Favorites and Fails. I have a lot of great favorites and some fails. I have drugstore, high-end, beauty, and lifestyle, a little bit of everything in this video. And some of you may be noticing that I'm in a very different setting than I've ever been. We did move. There are still boxes everywhere and I'm not quite sure where I'm going to end up filming or if I may change things up video to video. But this is where I landed for this very first video I'm filming in the rental that we're in for the next mm, about a year and a half while we build. This location does get Luke in the shot. I know some of you really like having him in my videos so we'll see where I end up. I'm going to kind of play around but I still have a lot of unpacking to do. So let's get into what I loved and did not love in May. I'm gonna start with a cruelty-free drugstore option that was recommended to me by a lot of you. This is the Milani Green Goddess Makeup Melter Cleansing Balm. Now, I love a good cleansing balm to remove my makeup. I love Pharmacy Green Clean. I've also had great luck with Clinique, but I've also had some not so great luck with balms. Sometimes they burn my eyes. Sometimes they just don't remove stubborn waterproof makeup or even sunscreen. I mean, I guess any makeup remover, that can be an issue. This this is really good. So it does actually look like the pharmacy balm in the tub, but instead of essential oils, this has cannabis seed oil, which is supposed to soothe and calm the skin. As with all balms, I apply this to my dry skin, massage it in, it kind of turns into an oil that I can then rinse off with water. It rinses very cleanly. It removes all my waterproof makeup, all my sunscreen, everything from the day. And then I go in with my regular cleanser. It does have a nice light scent. It's not overwhelming to me. Fragrance has to be noted in an ingredient list, whether it's natural or synthetic. They say the fragrance in this is bergamot, vetiver, and verbena. I'm very particular about my makeup removers, and this is a great one that is at a great price that I may not have even discovered if you hadn't recommended it to me. So thank you so much. This was a great find in May. This is the new NARS Orgasm palette. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this because it's all shimmers. I thought it was gonna emphasize everything bad on your face, especially if you're getting a little bit older. But then I started playing with it and I really love this so much more than I thought I would. The shades in this palette give the perfect summer beachy, bronzy, glowy look it's all in one palette. I was running errands this morning and I just had a very natural look on using something I'm going to talk about here in a second that I also really love. But when I sat down to start filming, I wanted to just show you a little bit from this palette, you know, because I feel like there's so many different ways you could actually use it. This shade, it's a deep shade that I think could work on a variety of skin tones, but I really like using it kind of in my crease lightly and in the outer corner. I actually do like it on my cheeks too. I have been loving this red reddish looking shade here for just that sun-kissed look, almost that sunburnt look. It just looks so healthy this time of year. So this is actually the shade Orgasm from this palette, but it's not quite like the blush. I feel like it's, I don't know, got a little bit more of a peachy golden sheen to it. I used a touch of it right here, and I just felt like it topped over this red shade really nicely. And I did use the shade Orgasm on my lid, and then I just took a little bit of this shade right here and put it on my inner corner. If you're wanting a more golden peach look, you can use this. The two highlights I am loving, the middle one is kind of a more light rose gold champagne shade, whereas this is a, a champagne. And I feel like if you have deeper skin tones, you could use either one of these shades and use either one of these as a highlight, but you could go bronzier if you wanted to. It's just so versatile. And I think the sheen is really lovely. I don't think it's texture emphasizing. It's not a glitter balm either. I foresee myself pulling this out a lot this summer for sure. Now this is limited edition. So if you're wanting this, I would scoop this up because sometimes things like this go pretty quickly. Now, if you're anti shimmer sheen and you're wanting something a little bit more natural, a little more subtle, but it's also very quick and easy to use. This is what I had on earlier today. This is actually something I meant to talk about a while back. I may have mentioned it in a video, but it wasn't in a favorites video. And I've actually been reaching for this quite a lot lately. This is also from NARS. This is the full dimension one cheap 
cheek palette. There is a two that is deeper. This bronzer looks a little bit light, like it's not gonna show up, but it actually does. It's the bronzer that I have on today. I started with a cream bronzer that I'm gonna talk about in a second, but you couldn't see it on camera. So I wanted to add a little bit more. I also started out with these two cheek shades. This one is a matte. This one has a tiny, tiny bit of radiance to it. Not full out shimmer like in this palette. And then you have a beautiful champagne shimmer highlight. It's kind of like the perfect everything. And I do love that they have a couple versions of this palette as well. You know how I am. I love a good multitasking, easy everyday palette that allows me to get out the door quickly. And this does that. I've been on the hunt for a while now for a replacement for my Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. This is just my favorite tinted brow gel. There's something about the shape of this wand that just works really beautifully to disperse the right amount of fibers and the right tint without putting in just gobs of product. And the shade is really nice for my brows. It's blonde, but I feel like it's more of a taupe and it kind of lightens them up just a little bit, just enough. But I haven't found a substitute that just does it for me. I either just don't like the product at all or the brush isn't quite right. It just doesn't disperse the product the way it's supposed to. It either disperses too much or too little. I just have not found anything quite yet, but this one is pretty close. This is the Revlon Colorstay Brow Fiber Filler. It's got this weird brush on it to where you can use it like a normal wand, but it's also got this little brush down further on the wand that allows you to dispense it kind of similarly to how the Maybelline product was. This shade is also called Blonde, but I find that it's more of a taupey shade, so it's not too light for my brows. Now, it's not the perfect substitute, but it is working pretty well because they discontinued this, unfortunately, and it was a great product. So at least I have something that is in existence that I can get my hands on that, you know, works decently well, and it's still drugstore. So the first time I spoke about this next product, I, I don't think it was super favorable because of the packaging. And I think that kind of overshadowed the product inside. So I wanted to give these a re-mention because I have been reaching for them quite a bit because I've been reaching for a lot of tinted balm type products that have some opacity to them and just make my lips feel really good and nourished. And this is one of those formulas that lasts a decent amount of time as well. It also has kind of a sweet taste to it, which I've really been enjoying. This is the It Cosmetics Pillow Lips Solid Serum. Now my complaint is that the packaging is this click mechanism, which I think could malfunction or break easily if you're not careful and kind of methodical with your clicking. But that said, I've really been liking the formula a lot. I like a narrow bullet too. It applies easily. I don't really need a mirror. They're nice to carry in my purse. I just have to be careful not to click them up too far because I can't click them back down. <laughs> but I do love the product inside so much. The two shades that I've been wearing and loving the most are Humble, and that's the shade that I have on my lips right now, and Wink, which is this really fun, bright coral. Great for this time of year. I'm tasting it right now, and it just tastes so good, and it, and it feels really good and nourishing. I feel like using products like this during the day just to keep my lips so hydrated and they just don't get chapped, you know? So I may have found a product that is rivaling my Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide. I don't know how many tubs of that I've gone through, but we have a contender here. For those of you that don't know, I have very sensitive skin. It is oily combination, but I do get some surface dehydration from using prescription retinol. It just happens. And there's something about the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide that just agrees with my skin. And I love the anti-aging benefits it gives as well. It's not just a basic moisturizer. It's got the you know nine signal peptides and all kinds of good things in it. I've raved about the brand Holofrog before. They've previously had cleansing products Products. That's what they specialized in. And they just launched a Grand Amino Cushion Cream. This is actually 1.7 ounces, which is right at the same size of the regular size Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide. The reason why I've been liking this is because not only does it have the peptides and things that the Drunk Elephant has, it's got more in it for anti-aging and hydration. The consistency is a tad bit thicker, but it's not too thick for my skin whatsoever. It absorbs beautifully and my skin has been responding really well to it. It just 
does something for me. And that's kind of how it is with the drunk elephant. You know, when something works, it works. I like the Tatcha water cream too. They both just work really nicely for me. And this is one of those products. It's also a smidge less than the drunk elephant and it's got more in it. So this is a concentrated formula of peptides, ceramides, vitamins, antioxidants, and a blend of 11 amino acids. It is intended to restore, brighten, support water retention, and fortify the skin barrier without pore clogging lanolin, waxes, or silicone. Cones. It also has niacinamide if you like that added benefit of, you know, keeping your skin clear, helping your pores appear smaller. Some of you will be able to wear this in the daytime too. Right now in the hot weather I'm in and in the humidity, it's too heavy for my skin type, but I think normal and dry skin could easily wear this in the daytime. Maybe even combination or oily skin in a different climate, but right now I'm loving this for nighttime. The texture though is really nice and light. It's not a heavy cream. I'm going to have all of the products I'm talking about linked and with this product you can see the specifics of what all the ingredients that are in here do. I don't want to bog down this video with that because I still have a lot more to talk about but just know this is really great not just for moisturizing and helping your skin barrier but for anti-aging. I've just been really impressed. So the Maybelline Cheek Heat Blushes, I feel like have been kind of hit or miss for people and I was really late jumping on the bandwagon with these. The shade that I got is a little bit light. What is this? Coral Ember shade 30, but I just kind of wanted a neutral peachy tone and even though it's called coral, it's more of a peach. When I first started applying this to my face, I did not think that I was going to like this because it was so sheer. I almost thought it was kind of pointless and I didn't think it was really going to set down enough or wear long enough enough, but I actually have really enjoyed this. Because it's sheer, it blends out so easily and effortlessly that it looks super natural on the skin. So this is one of those great cream liquid products that you can throw on easily if you're wanting to run out the door and you don't have to worry about blending out a bunch of color so that you don't end up with clown cheeks. It's a foolproof product that is affordable and allows you to get ready quickly. I mean, what more can you ask for? There are some brands that I just have a lot of luck with overall. Maybe not with everything, but with a lot of their products. Persona Cosmetics is one of those brands. Even though Sona's products are at Ulta now, I still feel like she's kind of an indie brand. And just the stuff that she has put out has been top-notch quality. And the new bronze multi-sticks that she just launched are wonderful. No matter your skin type, if you like a cream bronzer that blends out easily and wears well, I think you will absolutely love these. There are two shades. You have Sahara that is the deeper shade. This is really great for contouring if you're my skin tone, but if you have deeper skin tones, this could be your bronzer. And then there's Dune, which is what I use for just an everyday bronze shade. If you have oily skin and you're kind of worried about them lasting on your skin, I mean, they last on mine, even in my shiny T-zone in this humidity this time of year. Again, another quick and easy product that wears well. I was in the Wet n Wild section of the drugstore and saw the Wet n Wild Photo Focus powder. And I remembered a lot of viewers have been recommending that to me over the past few months. I thought, why not try it? But because it's Photo Focus, I kind of thought that it would be too radiant or luminous for my skin. It's not. It's a lovely powder that sets both my dry under eye area and my glowy face very well. It's very natural looking. And as a bonus, I do enjoy using it as a finishing powder. I don't notice any scent. This is one of those products I wish I had tried sooner. I just did a video on that. And if I had tried this first, this would have been in that video. It is that good. So if you're looking for a drugstore loose powder, I think again, no matter what skin type you have, this could work really well. Now I'm not saying that you'll never have to blot with this if you have oily combination skin. It is the powder that I have on today. And I, I think it looks really nice over a tinted moisturizer. So I'm not complaining. I think it looks really nice and lovely and, and it, it, it looks natural. I decided to pick up some products from the brand Necessaire. I've heard so much hype about them. I know Michelle Wong, one of my good friends, it's one of her favorite body care brands. I avoided trying Necessaire for a long time because I just don't spend as much on my body skin as I do on my face and hair skin care products. But I mean, after you hear so many people raving about products, you start thinking maybe there's something to it. So, you know, for science, for research, I picked up a few things. One thing that I love is that they have truly 
fragrance free everything. So if you're sensitive to scents or if you have really sensitive body skin, their products are, are perfect for that. But you can also get different scents too. Now first I'll talk about the two products I got in the scent sandalwood. Before I, I continue with this, I do have to tell you that since I've been using these products, my body skin is probably the smoothest it's been in years. I'm not joking when I say that. After my showers, when I go to apply my products, I am kind of marveled at how smooth everything feels. There's something about these products that just work beautifully. This is not your normal sandalwood scent. This is a very earthy scent. It, it's it's a sandalwood like I've never smelled before and it's lovely. It's invigorating. It's truly a joy to use in the shower. So the body wash is very, very gentle. It lathers beautifully. It cleanses well. It doesn't strip. It just leaves my skin feeling just lovely. The exfoliator is pretty much the perfect body exfoliator. If I could have made one myself, this is how I would have made it. And I love that it's not in a tub that I have to scoop out. With a lot of body exfoliators, the granules are placed too far apart to where you almost don't feel like you're getting any exfoliation or they're too harsh. This is gentle, yet it's effective. And as you exfoliate, it kind of almost lathers up in a way and just dissolves and, and just rinses off cleanly. You're not left with an oily, greasy residue in your shower. The two fragrance-free products that I purchased are the Body Serum which I've never heard of before. I didn't even know a body serum existed and the body lotion. I decided to get these in fragrance free versions just so they wouldn't interfere with any perfume that I was wearing. So the lotion itself is just a beautiful texture. It absorbs fully and it nourishes my skin. And that's what I want from a lotion. I don't feel like it wears away and like my skin gets ashy shortly after I apply it. But this serum, it's very similar to how a facial serum works. You apply it either alone or underneath your body lotion. It's basically a daily hyaluronic acid body treatment. You can put it on while your skin is damp or if you top it with the lotion, you're really sealing in that moisture. I've found that using these two together has just made a world of difference in my skin. And I only use the serum probably two to three days a week. But man, these products are products that I wish I hadn't waited so long to try. They're that good. And this is coming from someone who really just cringes at the thought of spending money on body care. Yes, I do use some expensive lotions because my skin gets really dry and ashy or I get, you know, those arm bumps. I haven't had those since I've been using this and this just takes any lotion I've ever used to a whole other level. The fragrance-free products also make other fragrance-free products that I've used before seem like they have a scent to them. These literally smell like nothing. So if you are wanting to invest in your body, skin, health and truly transform it, I would look into these. You've seen me wear these earrings in a couple of videos now. I can't seem to stop wearing them for a statement earring. I mean, I have a few that I rotate, but these are my newest statement earrings and they have the matching necklace. They do go perfectly together. I mean, today I'm wearing studs because it's just a stud earring kind of day. And I've actually really been enjoying these studs for, you know, just casual days and throwing on an earring, kind of a disc kind of earring. So I've really been enjoying these pieces. You know, I like my jewelry and I know a lot of you do too because you ask me about my jewelry in my videos and on Instagram. So I like to share my finds with you. I was looking for a flat shoe that had a little bit of uh, elevation to it because I didn't want to, you know, feel short, but I didn't want something with a heel necessarily. And I found these slides. They're very, very comfortable. I believe they come in several shades. They're also very lightweight. I've gotten more compliments on these shoes and there's something that I can throw on with shorts or whatever I'm wearing and they're just easy to wear anywhere. And if you're someone who wants a little bit of a wedge and something cute to to wear with, again, whatever you're wearing this summer. I picked these up. Also, big compliment getters. Even if you're just wearing a solid, plain outfit, throwing these on just adds something to it, you know? You can either buckle them or zip them up the back. I've just been loving these so much in May. I did finally try the new Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. I got the shade Light Medium Honey, which is the same shade that I wore in the original Shape Tape. Keep in mind that my under eye area is dry and I have some texture and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to try this because I wanted to see if it actually was creamy enough for my under eye area. And while it does seem 
a little bit creamier than the original Shape Tape. It's still not quite creamy enough for my under eye area. I just feel like there's something I'm not getting from it. It doesn't have quite the coverage either of the original Shape Tape. So I feel like you're dealing with a completely different concealer. It's just not as creamy as the concealers that I reach for on a day-to-day -day basis. My Dior, Laura Mercier, Pat McGrath if I want full coverage, Armani. I mean, I have so many concealers that I really love that I like a lot more than this. The Too Faced Sculpting, I would reach for hands down over this. I don't know. I just felt like it was still a little bit drying and it just wasn't the same level of coverage. So I have this Milk Makeup Glossy Lip Plumper. In the world that we're in, and with so many different lip plumpers and lip balms, I just feel like every formula should be, you know, pretty much something you want to reach for if you're going to spend your money on them. This formula was very okay for me. It didn't have a great taste to it though. I do not want to reach for this at all. I have other lip plumpers that I love and this just did not cut it for me. I like milk makeup overall, but I feel like they could have just done a better job with the lip plumper. It just kind of had a funky taste and I don't feel like it plumped my lips that much to warrant spending the money on it. I think I mentioned this Anastasia Brow Freeze Brow Styling Wax in a haul when it first came out, but I didn't really go in depth with liking it or not liking it. I was still on the fence for a while, but in May, I took some time to really play around with it and kind of figure out, does this work for me? Does it not? Why or why not? This is a brow wax that will give you that kind of laminated look and hold your brows in place all day. I mean, it really holds them in place, but because I have kind of sparse, uneven brows. I find that I prefer a more natural, kind of fluffier brow look that brow fibers give me, or even just not using anything gives me and just using a brow pencil. Because this kind of glues my brows down to my face, for lack of a better term, it just emphasizes the unevenness and how much I need to fill them in. So for that reason, this is a fail for me in particular. I know a lot of people really love this. I think if you have fuller brows, or if you have more even brows that don't need a ton of filling in, maybe just a little bit of filling in, I think you would like this more than I do. But for me, this was just a, a big fail. I just, I never liked the way my brows look when I use this. I recently took you on a trip through my trash where I shared what did not work out for me, what I won't be repurchasing and what I love and repurchase. I'll have that empties video linked here for you if you missed it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and a big special thank you to those members of the Stephanie Marie Circle who go above and beyond to support this channel and a special, special shout out to the premium members. It truly means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I'll have information down below in the description box about joining the circle if you want to see more information about the different levels and you can also hit the join button down below and you can see that information there. If you're not subscribed I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye!